will never disrespect me. Ever, 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 ever disrespect me. Ever, 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 ever disrespect me. Pussy. You gotta start it with the song. Here we go. Bang. That's how we started off. Fuck your life. Welcome to Coney Island, motherfucker. You know what I'm about out here. I don't do my own home cause I don't have to. You can run your mouth, I don't care. But if you get too close, I'm gon' clap you. It's too real out here to be scared. A real gon' do whatever he has to. A man is the last thing you should fear. It ain't considered a crime unless they catch you. Turn to your dog. When I step up in the bar, welcome to outside with the real motherfucking men. We live in Coney Island. This is episode 16. It's a it's like 74 degrees in Coney Island. It feels about 68. I'm fat, so I'm still sweating. But everybody else apparently got hoodies on. You know what I'm saying? It's a cold day for them. <laughs> so the right of me, this guy needs no introduction. He's a motherfucking legend. He's a motherfucking legend in the game. Originally from New York, we claim we we're gonna start claiming him over here. You know what I'm saying? Fact. But he's a West Coast legend. DJ Muggs. Yeah. Okay. So the right of him, he's not at all from New York, but we still might claim him over here, you know? Because <laughs> he's a solid individual. That yeah. Since the day I met him, he's been solid. There's very few people that you meet in this rap game that are solid individuals. The majority of them un unsolid, like fucking baby <laughs> We got my boy, Unsolid T.F., you heard? Yeah, 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 West Side, West Side, West Side. Yeah. And to the right of them, <laughs> my glorious co-host, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know his aunt sucks baby dicks. You know he's been through two open heart surgeries and he got a heart of a 17-year-old woman. You know what I'm saying? He's out here fucking like a newborn. Yeah. Hey, yo, what? Yeah. You got pops, that's why yeah. yeah, you heard? Yeah, nobody <laughs> can <need you. laughs> And to the right of him, my other co-host, this is the second time we've seen him this year. You know what I'm saying? He used to be Rockefeller's A&R. You know what I'm saying? Facts. <laughs> we got sick to dumb. Yeah. 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 Yo. Six. A disclaimer, Six never worked for The Rock. He just represents. Nah. All he, he wakes up listening to Jay-Z. He bubble baths listening to Memphis Bleak. Facts. He showers Facts. listening to Amil. You know what I'm saying? Brush my teeth to Beanie And he season. got a tramp stamp, Rock La Familia. Nah, you know that's, what I'm nah so that's not a fact. So, that's not a yo, fact. Mug, that, that joint right there, hold up. We, well, let's start with that. That that um song. Was that originally a... Uh, a Soul Assassin song? Yeah, that was a Soul Assassin song. Was gonna that's be, one of my like favorite joints. It was going to be on a Soul Assassin album that never came out. And um, we was on tour and they was like, yo, we need one more joint for Obi's album. So we use that one. So we, you know, we put it on Obi's album. Yo, because forever I couldn't find that. When the streaming started, that's like one of the first songs I would look for. And I never knew it was on Obi's album. I, I searched every mug shit. Maybe I didn't know the name. I searched everything, never could find it. Then one day I'm listening to, I said, yo, I never heard this album, let me listen to it. And the song pops up on there. That's like the heyday of, oh, of Shady Records. That's Ooh. M, Yayo, yeah, yo, 50. Banks, 50, OB, yo, that shit is crazy. Yeah, they went, they went crazy on that shit too. They how went. do you, how do you, how do you formulate something like that? Because, I mean, throughout the whole Soul Assassin series, Soul Assassin's 3 out right now, it just dropped, but, how do you formulate songs? Like, 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 how do you know who to put together? Well, that one was pretty much, it was just the Shady family, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. It's just, they just, they just went, they, they got the beat and they just took over. Everybody just jumped on that shit. They just went in, man. They all murdered that motherfucker too, man. That's, I think that's one of 50's best verses ever in his just career. Yeah, and that was early 50 too. That was first album time yeah. right there. Yeah, first that's... album time. Because we was on tour doing the anger management in Europe. Cyprus, 50 Cent, Exhibit, and uh, 50 just had Wankster in, um, in the club. Oh, so he was so brand brand new. The album didn't even up. come out yet? Not yet. Wow. Oh, so he had something to prove. Oh, Especially he was, he was on that with M. He was yeah, killing he was it. every motherfucker. Oh, yeah, night. nah, for yeah. Real. That's vintage OG. Get rich or die trying. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And he was on tour with them. You know, he was thirsty. I, I need to get ripped something. Facts. Facts. Yo, cool. TF, what's up, man? You looking like Kenny from South Park out here, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything's scandalous, man. He's cold, he's cold, he's cold. like this. Yo, let me tell you something about TF, man. Like, 
probably up to last year. I didn't know him. I just knew of him through my man Vegas, New Vegas Films. I go out to LA, I have a show. Um, no, that was like two years ago. That was yeah. That, oh yeah, that was yeah. that was right before Bing Bong went crazy. It was yeah. out. Bing Bong shit was out, but it wasn't super viral yet. And I told Vegas, I said, "Yo, tell your man's, call him up, man. Tell him if you want to come out on my show, and and perform a little joint." And uh, bro, ever since then. Oh uh, yeah, we've been tapped in. We've been since rocking. Then. Every time I'm in LA, TF is with us. Anytime TF is out here, we with him. You know what I'm saying? Yo, and yeah. just a super solid individual. How? How you? How you? You're next out of LA. You know yeah, what I'm saying? For real. Yeah, He's yeah. You're the next guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna run this shit up. Tell the people about yourself that may not know you. Uh yeah, man. Los Angeles. You feel me? South Central. Born and raised. You feel me? Well, I was born in Sacramento, but you know, raised in Los Angeles for the most of it. You feel me? Just running through the streets. Fell in this music shit like 2012. Been running it up since then. You feel me? Really like uh nigga hit the end up hitting the road with Q. In like 2016. By, school, and, by Q, you mean Schoolboy Q. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Don't know. You yeah. know, shout out my boy Q, uh, Schoolboy Q. Hit the road with him 2016, uh, pushing that track Tukey Knows, and shit, I ain't looked back since. Yeah, you nah, that's, I mean? that's fire. Like, and like, out here in Coney Island, I got a mural. And his, in his hood, he got a, he got a mural. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's he, love. That's love when you get that type of. Uh, Recognition in the city while you still living, you feel me? Yeah, I a lot of motherfuckers don't get to see that till you know till it's over with. Yeah, you feel me? Fine. So how did you link with with Q with Schoolboy Q? Well, he from the set. He from the land. We okay. both from yeah. We both from the fifties. You feel me? When I came home, he was running it up. He was already doing it up. So you know, he just told me like just stay on it. And I was like probably like 2013, 14. You know, I came home 2012. Uh, that's around the time he had the oxymoron shit going on. So he was like, yeah, man, just stay on top of your shit. You know, keep going, keep grinding. That's what I did. And then he just hit me up, like, come to the house. Just like years later, though. A couple years later, 2015. And uh, that's when we laid down Tuki Nose. And now, what I like about you and, 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 and school, like, I could tell that y'all from the same area. Y'all sound similar, but nothing alike. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Which I think is super dope. Um, and congratulations, my boy just signed. Ooh. For Equity, Rock Nation, make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So I need to let y'all know that Muggs is probably the inspiration for this whole podcast right here. Because probably last year, Muggs, Bobby, they came by the block. And they hung out for the whole day, right here, probably like a couple, like the next, in front of the, we didn't have the store yet, so we was in front of the barbershop. Um, and it just was dope to have people that I grew up listening, like I grew up listening to Cypress, I grew up listening to Soul Assassin, Mugs, all of that, to just be on the block and have that. And then I think, I don't know if it was before or after, Exhibit as well came to the block. And, yeah. But when Mugs stood here the whole day and I'm asking him questions like, I always wondered about from listening to the music. I was like, yo, this shit would be a fire podcast. And uh, and that sparked the idea for the outside with Gorilla Nems podcast. That's fire. So Muggs is probably the inspiration for this podcast. You That's know what I'm dope. saying? So I was, I was, um, I really didn't notice it until this morning, bro. I was going through the catalog, listening to shits. But I have, I've been, I think Cypress Hill might be one of the first groups that I have been with, like, I started out, like, you guys came out right when I start, like, really was getting into hip-hop. I had the original Cypress Hill shit on cassette. Yeah. I had Black, Fr um, Black Sunday. Black Sunday on CD. That was when CDs was first coming out. Yeah, yeah. Temples of Boom. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I, I've been through it through the whole shit, and I feel like, what's your favorite Cypress Hill album? The first one. Yeah. Yeah, that's something. That's my whole life leading up to that point. You know what I mean? It was everything we was going through. It was like through about four years to make it. Just all of our demos, man, and everything we was going through on the block. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. I seen today. On, I was watching the documentary too about real estate. Mm. I heard the old version and the new version. That real estate shit. 
Everybody thought y'all was from New York. I'm sure y'all said this a million times, so we're not gonna get into it. But everybody thought you y'all yeah, was originally from New York when Killer Man came out, and it was in Juice. Well, we shot the video here too. I know. We had we had and two. And you had Ice Cube in it, right? And Ice he was Cube out was here. here. He just happened to be here. We had two days off. <clears throat> we was on the Naughty by Nature tour, following him, following him around in a van. We had a van. They had a tour bus. It was like you know five of us in the van, and then we had two days off. We was doing BET. BET was in in um in Washington D.C. before. Yeah, yeah. MTV yeah. was here, so it was two days off. We shot to New York. We shot Hand on the Pump and Red Hook. Then we did Killer Man the next day, $10,000. We just jumped on a train, went to Washington Heights, shot back down to fucking Astro, Astro Place with the square. Yeah, yeah. And that's where Q popped up. Then Tim Dog popped up too, even yeah, when we yeah, had yeah. Fuck Compton out right that's at the time. And then Q Tip was there, and then from what I hear, Prodigy and, and Havoc was there. They just got out of school. They was little kids just kicking <laughs> it in the background. That's crazy. That's fire. Did. Did Jews catch flack on the West Coast for that? No, not at all. Cause that wasn't the beef wasn't back then. No, nah, the beef was later. That was yeah. like 91, but Tim 92. Tim Dog still had fucked up. Yeah, Tim Dog was just trying to fucking ca Get catch a wave. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Facts. That's all he was doing. Now, I Wait, was listening. Was, I think he, he dropped a record called from Fuck Compton. Yeah, <laughs> that's tough. It's a rapper from the Bronx. Yeah, I just recently heard it, bro. That was before my time, really. But I, I went back and listened to it like a couple years ago, and I was like, man. Yeah, what he was on? What kind of city he was on? He was, he was just, just like, yo, fuck, like New York's, you know, started rap, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, fuck West Coast rap type <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Just an angry motherfucker trying to get his name up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fuck your life. And I guess it didn't work because that's the only thing he's ever it been known work. for. <laughs> Damn. It didn't work at all. But I think on Black Sunday, the, the, that's probably the illest intro just to set off a whole album, I Wanna Get High. Oh, that's right. But that shit just, that's so on brand with you guys, but it just, on all the albums, bro, I was, it's like the, the album just starts off banger, 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 banger. Even on the Cypress Hill, you got Hand on the Pump, so, you know, fuck it. Oh, you gotta come with bangers. It's like your lineup, the Yankees lineup. You gotta put the, the bump, boom, 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 boom. You know, you don't put no weak shit because after three songs, if shit ain't banging, I'm not going to listen to the Facts. rest. But if you got three or four bangers and the next one ain't so good, you can be like, all right, that's not bad. <laughs> you know I mean, it's all psychological. That's, that's, that's so kind this, of what thought, taught the, me about how to put the, my There's an together. art to push shit together. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And just keep the interest of motherfuckers. <laughs> and then keep that energy, whatever you're trying to do. Sometimes oh. you got to bring them up, then you bring them down. Then you bring them back up. Exactly. Exactly. You been rich since 91? I've been rich since 91. <laughs> ain't look ain't look back, motherfucker. So you've been rich longer than you've been broke? You know, I, you know, yeah, I was thinking of that the other day, too. <laughs> we was broke, food stamps, all that shit, but... That's legendary. That's fire. Facts. We hold some. So now, <laughs> now we're just doing this because we want to do this, you know what I mean? The motivation ain't the bread, the motivation ain't the fame. Yeah. We just doing what the fuck we want to do. I like fucking doing cool shit with cool people. <laughs> that's what we do. I do that's, dope shit. I hear you. That's the, that's the, the, I do dope shit, that's the purest form of hip hop. Like that. When you don't do it for fame. When you ain't, I heard you say something. I say it a, a, a lot too. I put out music for myself. That's it. If, when some, I'm, if other people like it, so be it. Yo, man, I do everything I do is for me. You know what I mean? It just so happened like 40 million motherfuckers liked it too. So yeah. I, I'm going to just keep doing it for me. That's selfish and dope at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was watching the documentary, which be. was incredible, by the way. I was watching the documentary where you guys were talking about, like, you were the pioneers of, of, of weed, really, in yeah. that era. Yeah, motherfuckers. Nobody was, was talking like was that. They were smoking weed, but they wasn't talking about it on yeah, records. Nobody had, wanted to yeah, do they that. They were saying, I don't smoke weed because it gives a brother brain damage. You know what I mean? We came out just doing what we did on the block. We smoked. We was advocates yeah. for it. You know what I mean? Shows, everything. We came out raising money for, for Normal, the National Organization mm -hmm. Reform of Marijuana Laws, to go and get money to go to Congress to lobby for this shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. we was putting in the work early. We were just, we got past the torch from Bob Marley and shit, so it's just, you know, we like, so we was just like, this is shit we like, we should, we should legalize this motherfucker, you know what I mean? Yeah. Documentary we put the work man. in. I went on Saturday Night Live and smoked live yeah. on the air. They said I couldn't light my joint, you know what I'm saying? But we ain't going out like that. Do we say like someone else. 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 You banned yeah. forever? Banned forever. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck fuck y'all. Yeah. Some legendary shit is worth it. Light up, get, get, cops <laughs> sitting on the side of the stage, like you light up, you're going to jail, you know, Arizona and shit. And they used to have, when you go to Arizona and Texas, they would have the checkpoints for you all and go through all your shit back nice. then. So, you know, so if you would have smoked, they was going to lock you up lock right you there. Up. 
Like off the stage? You know, shit was dangerous back then. Now it's boring. Weed's everywhere now. The yeah. shit ain't even yeah, yeah, no yeah, more. Yeah, you know I mean? locked up a, a, a cigarette's back. more edgy now than some weed. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, facts. So. Yeah, How y'all linked up? Uh. Shit, uh, First time I met him was at the Rock Marcy um, <clears throat> listening party. Art, art that kills. He came through, yeah. kicked it. Then I think Worthy might have brought him through the studio the first time. Worthy, right? Worthy brought me to the lab, but I, initially I met him with Rock at a, uh, Rock's listening party for the Mount Marcy album. Nah, yeah. because when you read Muggs, Muggs is very militant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like he looks now, Why, yeah, he fine. might be happy to see you. And he looks like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The happiest day of his life. Oh, or I'm you might be recording with him. You might think you laying down a killer verse, and he'll just be like, "Yeah, he got the same face." You Real don't know shit. if he likes it or not. You know what I'm saying? But that's the same thing like 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 with Static, Static Selector. Everybody that meets him, all the artists think he don't like them at first. But that's just his face. Yeah, yeah, Static is like that. I thought it's that part too, of his right? genius. Nah, it's part of his just genius. Got, like a miserable looking face. Yeah, fact. Shout, out, shout, shout out to Static. Out to static. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was with Muggs in the club. I'm like, yo, he, he was like, I'm like, damn, this dude's mad or something. But that's just how he is. He saw us yesterday. He was chilling. That was a vibe. Thanks for inviting us too. Oh hell yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, yeah man, that shit was yeah. dope. That shit was dope. I, I never been. That was that was a bougie and hip hop dope ass party. At yeah, a that classic was, car club. That was fire. Pier seventy six. That shit was. Super fire. Now, being from Queens, when you moved to Cali? I moved when I was 12, you know, like 83. So you was? 82, 83. So your formative years was in Cali though? Yeah, I would come back though all the time. I used to jump, I hated Cali at first, so I'd take the fucking Greyhound back. For the, the summer. Greyhound from, from, from Cali, Cali to Greyhound was, was $99, oh. yo. Three to days Queen? to get here. How long? Yeah, How days? many days it took? Three days. Yeah. Like Christopher yeah. Columbus. Yeah, man. Back, back and forth. I used to do it like that because I come out here for the summer. I come out for Christmas vacation every time. As soon as the day school was over, I was out. Really? Yeah. That's how it was when I went to school in the Poconos. That's where I started writing raps because every weekend, though, as soon as school was over, I would hop right on the bus and come back to New York. Yeah, yeah. Then I kept the place here in the Lower East Side for like 15 years. And then um, then I had my, my kids and I was like, man, I got a single apartment over here for $2,300 and I got a three bedroom house for $2,400 in LA. Let, yeah, me, let, me, let me just lock this down. Yeah, and, facts. Mm. Yeah, yeah, everybody, the, everybody always thinks you're Mexican? I was just about to ask. Yeah, yeah right? Said, out there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you guys are like a Latin group. That, that's what you guys are. Yeah. In, in hip hop, you know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? The highest selling Latin group. That's fire anyway. No yeah, Sendo Send Dog's from Cuba, originally from Cuba. Yeah, that's what I'm B-Real's Cuban and Mexican. My mom's from Italy. My mom's from Naples. Yeah, facts. That's and so your dad, too? Yeah. You full Italian? Yeah. <laughs> that's everybody, tough. everybody, I, I mean, I thought TF was like no, I, I, Puerto I get, Rican I, or Mexican I, I, or something. Yeah, I get, I get that all day. <laughs> Especially sitting here. Yeah, 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 yeah facts. sitting facts, here, facts, they just Nah, but once they hear you talk, it's over. Nah, for real. <laughs> for real, I get that wherever I'm at, though, in the city. Out here, especially out here, though, for sure, 100%. What, well, they think you speak Spanish? Yeah. yeah. I went to Miami <laughs> one time, and they was, hey, papi, papi, hey, all this shit, for sure. What was his name? Hey, <laughs> 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 That's funny as fuck. <laughs> he laughed like a Cali nigga. <laughs> now, now, we had TF out here last Sunday. We was giving yeah. everybody pounds. Poor. I was like, yo, they probably don't got shit like this in, in Cali. I mean, you don't even got blocks where people walk by like this in Cali. Nah, nah, hey, yo, you can't do this he was just nah. He was just explaining, if you walk 10 blocks in Cali, you're not walking 10 blocks in Cali without getting checked. You can't do that out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you could just, sure. you know, you could walk and shit. You could look, you could look down the street and see, see the other side. That's crazy. You feel me? Like, on the other side of the light, that's, that's the other side, for that's sure. That's a whole different, whole different game. Yeah, fast. So what made... Your parents or your mom or whoever go to Cali from New York, Muggs? Oh, my mom moved out there first, and I didn't want to leave, so I stayed with my aunt. And after a couple <laughs> years, she's like, you got to get the fuck out of here. I'm sick of your <laughs> shit. So I moved to East L.A. to a place called Bell Gardens, and I was like, what the fuck is this? It's slow. Yeah. I mean, no buses. No, There was nothing there but bars and fucking hamburger stands and fucking... I was like, man, I got to get the fuck out of here. Mexican. <laughs> wow, Mexican. No, where I moved, it was like 99% Mexican. 
Mexicans. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know what a Mexican Shout was. Shout out to Mexicans. We didn't have too. Mexicans in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah they different Mexicans out here. But there wasn't there. There wasn't there yeah, yeah, in the facts. early eighties. You know, they facts. came a little bit later. They started coming out here, but the motherfuckers were like, "What's a Mexican?" When I would come back, <laughs> and I'd wear I'd, I'd wear khaki suits on the way back, and they'd be like, "Why are you dressed like a fucking sanitation worker?" And that's how we dress over there. And then they was clowning. The motherfuckers was clowning gang banging back in the days. It was like, over some colors for money because all the homies out here was hustling, yeah, trying facts. to get money. You know, everybody. I had the homies. That was 17, 18, just wearing suits, trying to be John Gotti out here. L.A. was on some whole other shit. Mm. It's a trip now, though, seeing how New York just flipped. Yo, crazy. You know? I, I noticed that, you know, it was around Death Row and when, when, when Tookie wrote, wrote that book. Yeah. You know, all the youngsters started reading it, and it's kind of... Yeah, in the early 90s. Yeah. In the early, especially I mean, with Rikers Island, with the Bloods. You had crews out here. Everybody had crews. Yeah. I remember there was fucking, um, I remember the Decepticons out here, yep. and the fucking Ball Busters, and Absolutely. Zulu. Absolutely. Like the Warriors. Yeah, it was Like the shit. Warriors yeah, movie, right. you know what I'm saying? It was, it was different crews had all different over. Crews. But they had crews. Yeah. Now, Motherfuckers really had them vests on. Hell yeah. 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 The 70s, that was before 70s. I was born. No, they didn't have the 70s in like in my time, but yeah. motherfuckers just had crews out here. Yeah. Yo, what's the difference between making a Cypress Hill album and a Soul Assassin's album to you? Uh, shit. I think um, Cypress, there's a certain energy and a certain a certain kind of music. I know how b Real's voice just bounces off of it and just yeah, pops, yeah, you facts. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think I could stretch it a little more with Soul Assassins. I could experiment and go in different directions where some things might not work for B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've experimented with b Real so much, I know what he sounds best on. That's prior. You guys never, through all the years, I mean, I know Sin, what went off and did his own thing, but you guys never always stood together, never broke up or nothing like that? Nah, we had we had, you know, brotherly beef. Of like course, that, that but, always but, happens. But besides that, nah, we've always been tight, man. Through through thick and thin. That's fine. You know what I mean? That's a real brotherhood, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's that's and I got the Hollywood Walk of Fame, that's fire. Oh, we got crazy. that shit. That's crazy. I mean, some that, people, yeah, that's what we doing, man. What you doing out here? Cause that shit is timeless. Cause you, I walk on that, and I'm, and I be like, bro, who the fuck is this? <laughs> they might have been popping probably in like the 30s, 40s, or yeah. something, but. You they don't give, know them now. They give you a little but one that's for forever. you. They give you like a little one for yeah, you. Yeah, we, 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 got, we, got, we got one, a dope one. And then they gave us a big ass fucking like official piece of concrete type piece shit. Of shit. And then um, I got a bunch for the, for the homies and the family. We got to buy some, you know, it's like gold oh, records. Oh, that's fire. That's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. How did they, they come to you? Yeah, they hit us up. You got to pay for that shit, though. You got to pay for it. You got to pay for it. You got to pay to get the thing done. Anybody who got one, paid for it. How much is it? Paid to get a major? Oh, 35,000. Let's go get one. <laughs> y'all, 35. So y'all got, got 35, 000, man. For you. Yeah. You pay for I throw an extra five in there. Put ain't, 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 ain't one of them motherfuckers that got it didn't pay. Because you got to pay for the, they block the streets, they got permits, security, all of that permits, shit. they got to Absolutely. build it, they got to do it. Got chipped in. It's a whole thing. I mean, we Yeah, just, they probably, that's, that's some, some Cali shit. Like they, but you think nah, about yeah. it, you get like. <laughs> they bitching like, about it. 25 million dollars worth of free promo. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. No, nah, that's 30, lifetime of 35 people. Thirty-five bands is nothing. That I should be there bro. forever. It's a tax write-off. It's a promo. That's a yeah, fact. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a promo. fact. Promo. So you you well, mentioned um right like Vince experimenting yeah. with uh that's with B Real's voice and shit like that. To me, if you listen to the songs, here is something you can't understand. How well, I could well, just well, here was Brazil. B Real has a natural nasal voice, right? Yeah. Like, he, back in the days, he was trying. Rock him was the shit. So it was the deep voice, like deep so voice, he was trying yeah, to yeah. rap more like that. But when he decided just to go in the direction of his natural nasal, I heard that shit and was like, I got that shit. Like, woo, that's Bro, that shit, you know what I mean? You, you know what I thought when I seen that? Because in the documentary, they show like, there was that moment that you were like, yo, that's it right there. You know what I'm saying? And to me, that's like, this might sound crazy, but to me, like the Dr. Dre of Cypress Hill. Mm, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because. That was the signature of the crew. Like that, it, all of the hooks, yeah, all of those that places. Shit came out, we all was like, we was listening to like, yo, this yeah. shit. I, it was I, so see, different. I was inspired was so by different. Public Enemy. So it's almost the reverse of Chuck and Flav, where Chuck had the deep voice, but Beaver had the high voice. Yeah. And yeah, then right, Sendog right. had the deep voice, right. and he was more like a Flavor Flav, you know what yep. I mean? So, fire, I, I mean, man. it was EPMD for us, Ultra Magnetic, um, and, and Public Enemy. Like, that's the shit we was bumping yeah. right there. Yeah, you know, EPMD was like the first mob beat from out here, you know what I mean? Yep. Absolutely, two-man crew. Every one of their shits was banging. And, and in the West Coast, 
BPMD was banging in the West Coast because yeah. they, they had them fucking yeah. more bounce to the out samples. Yeah. So they blew the fuck up out there. Hell yeah. They blew the fuck out there. How do you think your style would have been if you would have stayed in Queens? Well, the thing is, is that I was here. I would make most of those beats I made here. Really? So the shit about Cypress was that I kind of had a cheat code that I was going back and forth back then. Bringing, I remember bringing Rock Kim's record out there when he was on Zankia. I bought it at the Wiz on, on Main Street. Yeah, yeah. And just being able to bring shit back before you couldn't hear shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. we had a New York style of music with fucking LA lyrics and slang. You know what I mean? Yeah, and mix, flair, and, and you mix that shit up and the sound was unusual and, and new. Nobody was fucking around like that. It was yet. like futuristic, bro, when that shit came out. It was like, that shit was what the nuts. fuck is this? Shit was fire, though. It when still you, is. When you first... Yeah, that shit is timeless. I, I would love, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall, because that was vintage. That's when RZA... Like, when y'all met? The first Soul Assassin's album or before that? I met him before. I met him he in... He was on um, Temples of Boom, you No, know, I met him in, like, 93. I went down to a spot in, in Staten Island to the basement. I was kicking it. Because y'all was already popping. Yeah, we was popping. Yeah. And, um, you know, like 94, we was kicking it. And then um, I got him on Temple of Boom. Yeah. I got him on Temple of Boom. With you, God? Yeah. Then we just went. Raekwon was supposed to be on that originally. He's like, yo, I'm going to put Raekwon on there. And, you know, when I first heard the Woo, I think Jizza, Rizza, Method Man stuck out the most to me. Yeah. You know I mean, I, I wasn't Absolutely. really checking for Ray and Ghost yet. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. But then after, I was like, God damn, these motherfuckers is it. Oh, so you you turned down Ray? No, Rizza, Rizza ended up, I guess he probably didn't show yeah, up yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we got him. And then we just kicked it back and forth all the time, always talking, you know, linking up and shit. And then we did the Soul Assassin record yeah, nah, with, with Jizza, you know what I mean? That's a legendary joint right there. Yeah, they murdered that motherfucker right there. But you always had your ear to the street, because even on the first Soul Assassin shit, you got infamous Mob. Yep. Besides Mob Deep. That's the first record they ever made. Yeah, facts. So first I'm saying, like, made. people would see, like, the infamous Mob Deep stickers or the infamous Mob shit, but never really heard them. They was just the little homies. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. My, my boy Bigger B, who worked it loud, and he was the first Wu-Tang tour manager. And he, yeah. would, he, had, he had some shit called Unity in L.A., and he'd bring everybody out to L.A., so... First time you've seen Biggie, first time you've seen Wu, first time you've seen Mob Deep in LA, Bigger brought him. So yeah. he came out here with me and he was like, he knew, um, he's like, he, he hooked me up with Mob Deep. And then he's like, yo, they got some little homies, infamous Mob, you should fuck with them. So what I try to do is bring the legends and then the, the, the future legends and then some new motherfuckers you ain't heard. Yeah, you know them Call of the Wild dudes. Them too, they from Harlem. What? They, they was on, um, they from Polo Grounds. That's, this joint is the only sh shit I ever heard from them. We did a whole album. Really? We did an album, I had them sign. Out? Nah, they, they 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 started wilding out, so I had to just clip them. <laughs> <laughs> they started, think, they started thinking they was Biggie Smalls before the fucking record came out. And I was like, bro, all I know is I can give the record away to the DJs for free, and if they don't play it, what you want me to do? Uh -huh. So go figure it out. Good luck. How many albums <laughs> have you had with artists that you had to clip? That was the only one. A couple singers and some experimental shit before rap, yeah. That was yeah. the only one. I still got it there. They, they, some motherfuckers asked me to put it out. I'm like, nah. It's all right. Nah, this is the, the time of the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple singers. A couple singers. A couple singers. A couple singers working at Kifu right now. Yeah. What's your favorite <laughs> versus album? Or just your favorite collab album? Shit. Um, man, I like a lot of them. One of my favorite verses, though, from Soul Assassins is um, CeeLo on Decisions, Decisions. That's one of the hardest verses. The hardest verses, verses yeah. ever. And it's, it's funny that CeeLo... Um, he used to rap it on musical shit, so that was a stripped down beat. He was like, man, Muggs, I don't know about this shit, man. He kicked it, and uh, he got rhyming a month in the source. Yeah. <laughs> it's a legendary, <clears throat> legendary fucking verse right there. And then he came back with the Joker's Wild joint. Yeah. That I, joint is fire, too. I ran into him in um, Cabo in, in Mexico, and he was like, yo, when you doing another Soul Assassin record? I'm going to go, I'm going to get into it in a minute. And then um, I digitized a bunch of cassettes. I had like 200 cassettes, and I got them all digitized, and I have a gang of beats on there from the 90s. So I put one on Instagram one night, and CeeLo hit me five minutes later, yo, I need that. So I mm. shot it to him, and that joke is wild. But he's like, I'm gonna come from the from the POV, from the perspective of a cholo. And I was yeah, like, nah, that shit is amazing. That's fucking interesting, you know what I mean? Like, he loves West Coast shit, he loves gangster shit. He's yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah. I feel, I'm, he's like, I feel I'm, I'm from LA. Like, I relate more to that shit than anything. That's his whole shit, so we got a new project. We got about seven recorded right now. It's ridiculous. Really? Yeah, he's, heard, he, he's heard a few. Yeah, yeah. they nuts. That shit's crazy. They I nuts. can imagine. He's rapping. Because any time, yeah, nah, any time you've linked with him, it's been amazing. Because he's, he, he don't, he don't just, it ain't just one or two cadences. He's melodic. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? He yeah. starts doing different shit and throw some little melodies in there and he shit. He might be the, one of the most slept on, just that he don't get his due because he goes in other genres. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I've always thought, I mean, he was the, the foundation of, you know, 
the, the group. Damn, why can't I remember that name? Goody Mob. Goody Mob. Yeah, Goody he was Mob. the foundation of Goody Mob. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? He was the, uh, the standout star and just oh, other yo, shit. Yo, 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 what the yo, fuck yo, is he doing, bro? Oh, oh, my fault. Pay attention, pay attention. Security. Yo, security. He's drunk. <laughs> Yo, good shit, that? E. Good shit, E. Almost got sacked. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. That was a good stiff one. That was a good stiff yeah. one. That was a good stiff one. Yeah. Stiff one. Yeah. Offensive yeah. line. Come on. Kill that shit. Killed that shit. Gotta hit him with the Heisman. Hit him with the Heisman. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yo, you can let Grandmaster Cast through. Grandmaster Cast. Come on, Grandmaster. Yo, what up, Yo, 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 yo. Fuck it, Yo, that's what we do out here, man. We have fun with the fucking people, bro. You know what I'm saying? We have old ladies with baby carriages walking in the street, about to get hit by a car, just so we can do this podcast for y'all. You heard? <laughs> yeah, man. That's important that we bring that. We to don't you. let the little kids play in the on the on the sidewalk. They gotta play in the street because we doing a podcast. You heard? Suck your life. <laughs> yo, 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 yo! Shut them fucking kids up. <laughs> 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 Yo, 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 yo. Oh, 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 oh. oh! Yo, E, what are you doing, bro? Security. Yo, TF, so tell the people, like, yo, nah, not tell the people, tell us, bro. What's up? The, the best part about having a podcast is also I could interview people I fuck with and people I know that I don't really ask them questions like that, you know what I'm saying? And find out shit that, you know, you you wind up, you hang out with people, but you don't really ask them shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's some shit you find out you can't even say. Listen, Facts. Yeah. Like Hot likes men. <laughs> Come on, son. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yo, not nah, you. Yo, yo, shut up. up. Who you grew up listening to? Because I heard some in your old, in the, uh, one of the albums you're talking about, the big timers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Who, who, who you fuck with? Shit, Growing I, up on the West Coast, South Central. Like, who you fuck with coming up? Uh, I used to listen to everything. My uncle, my uncle really had me on. He used to have me listen to Cypress Hill, Guru. Uh, Mob Deep. I listened to a whole lot of East Coast music growing up. You feel me? But I was in the streets. Yeah, yeah. So I was relating to the West Coast shit too. You feel me? So then Cash Money hit. Well, before Cash Money, I was listening to No Limit, Scarface. I listened to everything. Fact. You feel me? But when I was really doing what I was doing out here, running around, that's what like Cash Money hit. And you know, they had like a cold, cold, like, they influenced the streets, you feel me? I was like, you know, on top of the what was going on musically, like, they really had the streets looking just yeah, like yeah, how facts. they was looking, you Absolutely. feel me? So, you know, just doing all that shit, but, like, I was always intrigued with the rap shit, the storytelling, you feel me? Slick Rick, Nas, Biggie, all that type of shit, so. It's crazy, because I was listening to the Scandalous 4 shit that you dropped. Yeah. And, um... Like he was saying, like we linked a few times, but I, I was gonna ask you, like, if you lived out here, yeah, because you can hear the influence, the New York influence. Nah, that's in one the of the bars. first things I asked him too. Yeah, that's I'm a like, fact. Because one time we was hanging out, he was calling me son. Yeah, son. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, <laughs> I asked them like that. I asked them. I said, <laughs> Why yo, you talking like that? I said he's from out here. Like he's barn, he's barn shit down on these, on yeah. these, on these songs. You know what I'm saying? Nah, a lot but of then you listen to a record like Connected. Yeah. And that shit straight West Coast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can hear the, the duality, like, a West Coast nigga with Rock Marcy yeah. on pill form, barring shit down, yeah. then you got that connected, that shit jumping, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, I always been, uh, like I said, I grew up, like, list, like I like storytelling. I really fuck with movies heavy, so, like, I be trying to paint a picture. If I could paint a picture, you know, if I could get you to hear what I see or see what I hear, and like through an audio, like that's the dopest shit to me. So, but if you fuck with movies, you in LA. Yeah. You ever fuck with acting? Uh, here and there, here and there on some, you know, just, just fucking around. You yeah. feel me? I like to, uh, you know, I like to really try to depict shit like that in my, like with my visuals here and there, but. Yeah, I seen I that ain't really, I ain't really, you sliding with the ski mask. Yeah, it's I ain't really cinematic. did nothing like no, no short films Yo, or nothing like that. you tell somebody one album to start from you, if they listen to you, what's the album to start from? No Hooks. That's, that's the name of the album? No Hooks, yeah. That was my first, that's my first, uh, that was the first shit I dropped. Yeah, cause I got first shit I dropped, but I wouldn't tell somebody to start from there. So nah, I, nah, nah I only say that because, like, 
I was rapping before that whole introduction with Tookie Nose. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of motherfuckers thought I was just finna come in straight full throttle gang banging. Facts. But I dropped no hooks and it's all rap. You feel me? So especially No over, hooks on the whole shit? No hooks at all. It's straight rap. You feel me? Go look at uh go check out September 7th. You feel me? Like that was the first shit, like following up Tuki Knows, and I don't think nobody was really expecting that shit, especially on the West Coast, because at the time motherfuckers wasn't doing that. Now it's kind of like, you feel me? The rap shit is like all the way circled back around, but like, especially like with with me and Two Eleven doing, you feel me? Uh, with the scandalous with the scandalous levels, like I was on that shit in 2017. 2017, I just. Like, like, fuck it, I'm a rap. And I had a bunch of motherfuckers, like my peers was like, yeah, nah, you gotta stick to the stick to the gangbang shit. Stick, stick to the, you know, the, the up-tempo beats and all that type of shit. And I'm like, yeah, nah, I ain't nah, feeling that. Nah, that. that's scandalous for shit. Nah, one of my no favorite skips. joints from you is Betty Crocker. Yeah. Also, cause I'm on it at the end, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But nah, that, just the <laughs> way it starts. You, yeah. don't, you don't let the beat start, you just start when the beat starts. That's my that's my that's the, my introduction album to you, the Blame Kansas album. Yeah. That's how I first started fucking listening to you, and uh, but that album is fire. Yeah, for sure. And you can uh, tell that you do music. It's more than just rapping. Like you you make actual songs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I feel like Blame Kansas is a dope album to go check out from them too. I heard yeah. you say you co-produced um, one of the joints. Nah, on that, that was 211 said that shit. 211 oh, he, he co-produced uh, one of them records on Scandalous Level Four. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, outside of Fucking uh, no hooks. It'll be it'll it'll be blank Kansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be blank Kansas because it'll give you the uh, you know it'll give you the 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 whole everything scandalous like the reasoning behind like where that came from. Facts. You feel me? Absolutely. What album would you tell people to start listening to for your shit? For me? Yeah. Gorilla Monsoon. Yeah, that's a classic. Cause it's like, I felt like that was my re-debut album. Like I put out mixtapes and shit before that, but I wasn't really like, you know. The Gorilla Monsoon is when I, I kind of told my whole, I, I treated it like a debut album, but I just retold my whole story and from, from start to end. Outside of your albums, if you had to let somebody listen to a hip hop album, one hip hop album, what would it be? Someone who's never heard hip hop, like, yo, you need to listen to this one as like the starting point. I Illmatic. Dramatic. I was Man, picking that's a good that. One. That's crazy. Dramatic. That's what I was thinking. Oh, y'all really. Life yeah. after that's, death. That's the, first, that's the first tape I ever I'll bought. I tell them to listen to Rise of the Motherfucking Silverback. Out there. <laughs> yeah. wow. Okay, but outside of your shit. <laughs> Yo, Mars, who's the um, weirdest person you got high with that you was like, wow, they, they smoke bud? It was like no shocking person? Um, What's, his, what's her name? Um, Who's that bitch from Kill Bill? Uma Thurman? Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman. Word! Oh, that's tight. That's I tight. like she fire too. I like her. Back in the days, man. That's I tight. think she's only fire because the movies. Like you watch a two hour of a bitch and you like, excuse me, I don't mean to say bitch, but right. that's how we say women. No, no disrespect intended. You watch two hours nah, of a bitch took, you wanna fuck. You she know took what a saying? needle in the heart and all that. I yeah, fuck. Yeah, cause shit like that. But then you meet them in real life and they nothing like that. They're like, Yeah, whatever. You know, don't or maybe fuck they my don't fucking. My I dream, know Quentin Tarantino's a, a weirdo. He always got bitches' feet in the picture in the in yeah, every movie. He, do, he got Salma Hayek. Face. He put himself <laughs> Yo, in the movie Salma so he suck a toe. In Dust Till Dawn, nah, Salma Hayek. Dust Till Dawn's my shit. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> he got <laughs> good pussy, wet pussy, <laughs> apple pie pussy, old pussy, no pussy. I think he was daydreaming. He went to five. Yo, how did Soul Assassin start? We, that's Hold a good on, man, before you answer that, did you, did you purposely <laughs> I told make that. an essay, cause like essay? Nah, it just worked out like that. <laughs> but um, you know, we had a gang of homies that wasn't rappers. That was creative and just, you know, but just just down. So it was like, we um, I put some photographers on early and then um, started their careers. The motherfuckers never came back and looked out. You know what really? I, mean? I put some directors on and motherfuckers got busy. And I was like, man, man, fuck everybody. I'm only hiring the homies. We're gonna build our, have our own team, build our own fucking ecosystem, and have our own economy. And then uh, we're just yeah. gonna help each other. You got dreams and goals and aspirations. We're gonna help each other get there, and just use all of our resources to help each other. You know what I'm saying? That's fire. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. That's make the blueprint. Some noise that. Yeah, make some noise. That's how it's supposed that. to be. That's the blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't make no assassins. noise, bro. Is that like where we be recording that? Is that like a yo? You, you live there, or is that like a just a compound? Oh, that's a compound. Yeah, it's yeah, It's just yeah. a compound. It's for, we all just, just, you know, some place to kick it. Everybody nah, come kick it and be creative. Bring your vibe, you know what I mean? And 
come. Remember since 91, son. They yeah. just got compounds, man. Yeah, you got to. The yeah. headquarters. I saw something about Bitcoin. You fuck with Bitcoin? Yep, all that shit. Really? All Web3, you know what I mean? That's the future. It's like when you first heard of the internet, you was like, man, fuck the internet. What am I going to do that? They might pull the plug and where's my store going to go, right? Yeah, yeah, fact. That's how I looked at it. You know, you had Web 1, which was when you could just read articles on the internet. Then you had Web 2, which changes music shit because now you could upload pictures and upload videos. Yeah. You know, and then now you got Web 3, where pretty soon, instead of looking at two-dimensional things, you're going to have holograms when, when motherfuckers, you're doing FaceTime. Facts. Like it's like going into chances, that, you know? Right? And it's going to the, you know, all kinds of different kind of shit like that. So that's the future, man, whether you want, you like it or not. Now is Web3 So I'm privatized? always like, <laughs> or is it? learn technology, you know what I mean? Stay on technology. You could use it for what we're doing here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but Web3, is that private or is that government? It's it's is it's it? just there. It's like the next internet. Shit. You know, it's the next, it's the next Fine. wave of... The government trying to take it. That's what I'm saying. You know, like it's decentralized. They're trying, you know what trying I'm to take. They're trying to take the, the money part, but there's so many other things in there. Like pretty soon, you're going to be able to have music, like like music where the music you're not going to have to go through fucking Spotify. You're going to have a coin where your music's going to go out, and you're going to get directly paid from your music from yeah. the people. Like blockchain. Yeah. All like that shit. when I was looking at, at Bitcoin and and all of those like cryptocurrencies when it first came out, I was like really studying this shit. And to me, the most impressive thing about it was blockchain technology. Technology, because nobody can shut the block it down anywhere. The blockchain is really the genius behind the whole tech. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. It's the genius. Yeah, that was dope. You got to stay on that shit, man. You you one of the first that I saw doing the merch heavy, Soul Assassins. The yeah. Because I remember I came to your spot. It had to be like 08. I came with Necro. That was the first time I was there. I was high as fuck. I think I was nodding out through the whole shit. But uh, I do remember <laughs> you seeing Mad merch, there was Soul Assassin's merch, everything. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, uh, we've been on merch like a motherfucker, like Cypress. I mean, I think we, our first merch deal was like a million dollars, like in 93. Damn. You know what I mean? Million dollars in 93. Million dollars in 93. Million dollars in 93. Million dollars in 93. When, 93 when I'm in everybody barking, like I started merch and I started vinyl. I'm like, y'all didn't start shit, man. We've been doing all this shit already. <laughs> you might have started it in your neighborhood, but you ain't starting none of this shit. What y'all started on? Columbia? Reckon? Yeah, we, my, my first group was 783. I know, I've seen that me, in the documentary. Me, me, me and two homies from East New York from Linden Projects, we were signed to. Um, Geffen Records around the same now? around the same time as um, Guns N' Roses. They just like, living, working. Yeah. You know what I mean? First gold record was Colors, 1988. You produced that? With the song for no, not the whole, not the song Colors. We had a song called Mad Mad World on the okay. soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We was managed by Rush, torn with Salt and Pepper, Kid and Play, MC Hammer, Tony Tony Tony, doing Tony, all kind Tony, of that Tony. shit. That Feels shit taught good. me. We was doing we was doing stadiums, and that shit taught me like what to do because I didn't know move, shit right. you know what I mean yeah, yeah. so I went into a meeting with Mr. Bill at, at Rush and he was he told 783 he's like so what's your concept what the fuck is a concept yeah and he broke with Public Enemy Run DMC's The Gangsters LL Cool J's Get For The Girls Slick Rick's The Storyteller I was like okay then he said "Um, you got a logo I was like what the fuck's a logo I didn't even heard a <laughs> word before he showed me and I was like okay so then I went back to Cyprus I was like yo we need a logo Concept, and yeah. Start, you know, putting these pieces together because there was no fucking Google. Yeah, you had to go do what this was shit. the? I learned the, the DJ. Concept? I learned the DJ by going to the clubs and just watching the DJs and be like, okay, and then go home and try to remember what the fuck he just did. Facts. The concept was we smoked weed like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. So you know we was in all that shit. So I was like, y'all motherfuckers gonna be like Cheech and Chong. We some weed motherfuckers. That's gonna be our thing. That's the, the blueprint. Weed. You know what I mean? That's why the weed's on our first logo, on the skull. Fire. And, and you know I was always in the rock and roll, Led Zeppelin. All Pink that Floyd. shit. And what I like about Led Zeppelin is they was never on their covers, you know what I mean? And then you, you would hear all these folklores. What it does, man, if you're not really, at least things up to your imagination. So your imagination's a motherfucker, you know what I mean? Um, I would read articles about certain rappers. Once I read about the third article, I was bored. I was like, I know everything about you. Yeah. You know, so I always wanted to leave some mystery in there. They almost yeah, they, dates they, it, too. Yeah, there's, there's no, no mystery you. now. There's no more, nah, there's that, no more yo, mystery. Even that, that. with, yo, Twitter. When Twitter first came out, it made me dislike a lot of artists I came up oh, yeah. liking. Because then they started talking and you started seeing their personality. I'm like, yo, this guy's a fucking bozo. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That happens a so lot. So it's always good to leave a little bit, you know. Mystique. Yeah, was, yeah, especially back then, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, 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 if it was up to Busy. me, Cypress, was, we was never going to be seen in any picture ever. Yo, that's fine. That's how I started it, but then the label was like, nah, that ain't going to happen. I was, well, making, I was selling too many records. They had to be seen. Yeah, bro. you had to. They said they got to be able to they make a connection. They got to put a, a face behind a brand. It's like when I first heard the Beastie Boys, I didn't know they was white. 
When uh. I first heard him, I was like, when you seen him, he was like, what the fuck is this? But that's also back then, there wasn't, it was either magazines or you seen them on like MTV. There that's, wasn't that was no it. internet. There was yeah. nothing. You, 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 you did a magazine, but that shit wasn't coming out for three months. Facts. By the yeah, time fact. you did it, you, you forgot know? about that shit. Yeah. I see like, since we're like in the 50th year of hip hop, I see things are like coming around full circle. A lot of the shit that you guys really started, which to be honest, if you see that documentary, like I was talking to Paz before we started filming, and he was like, yo, I lived through that shit. But there's a lot of information there, like the Woodstock moves, all of those things that we, you know, we were younger, we didn't really see that. But that culture is is cycling again where like a rap, these these young rappers, they get they're making money off touring, merch. All of that, that's that's like the blueprint from you rock should, and roll. Man. You want to be an artist, you got to have an ecosystem within. Yep. Some motherfuckers just think yeah, like, I'm facts. working, and they just do an Instagram. But that got it's lost for work. a second. It's not, yeah, it got lost. Like in the 90s, that got lost. Well, it I was knew this, like I knew punk rock, rock motherfuckers wasn't, they was making no money. They'd go on tour, they'd sell their merch. That's how they made money. Right. And you did college radio tours. College was like where it was. You do college radio tours and all them college kids like you. And then you know? they talk about you the rest of their life. Yeah, and, and that, that's how you would start. That was like the internet back then, just doing these college tours and doing college radio because radio wasn't playing you. College radio would play you, you know, because yeah. they would be playing yeah, the streets. Yeah, you? that was like the beginning when I rebellious. first started rapping. Like, yeah, it was all like rebellious. When I first started yeah, dropping right. projects, it was, you sent it out to all the college radio. That was right? it. That was that, because you wasn't getting on, like for independent artists, you wasn't getting on Hot 97, 107, 105, 105 none of that Kiss shit. FM, you BLS. Still, you still, boy, it's hard yeah. still. Back then, maybe you, you know, had a mix show on Friday night for an hour. Yeah. Maybe Saturday for an hour. That was it. If you didn't get played on that, you had to go to college radio. There was no other way to be heard back then, man. But you guys started that that blueprint, like, of hip-hop, really. Like, I don't know any other crew that was doing that. Who? What other crew was selling merch like that? Woodstock. 10,000 Yeah, I didn't know it was going to be like that, though. There was 550,000 motherfuckers there. Yeah. You know I mean? That's insane. That's crazy. So that's when I see motherfuckers sick. playing in front of like 100 people at the club and go, it was a movie. I go, that shit was like, What's the main parts of the, you say you need an ecosystem. What's like the main parts you well, think of? I'm saying, of, you know, like, I, I'm going to, for an example, my reference is like, I'll see some younger artist right now and all they do is Instagram and they think they're working. Or they might be lit in New York and they'll, they maybe get five grand in New York, but they offer them a hundred dollars to play in Cleveland, and they won't go because they used to doing this. You got to go. Yep. You go play in front of ten people, then you go back next year and play in front of thirty, then you go back and play in front of seventy, and then you you build you build a following in these places. You know what I mean? So you got to go out there and physically work and do shows. You physically got to do interviews. You physically got to show up. You can't do shit over this. You got to show up and be face to face, and then you build relationships with different people in different cities. You know what I mean? And then. You from a different time, different work ethic. These nah, kids but ain't what he well, said, shit, yeah. One time, I, after the first album, I go, man, I gotta go on a promo tour. Cause the promo tour back then, you go, you do the morning show, then you go do an in-store, then you go to the one stop. The one stop is the people, they bought the records for all the mom and pops. And you gotta and go sign them, and, and then shit. you sit in there, and then you go do the fucking mix show at night. Then you go play in front of 30 people. Then you go, and you do the local press, then you go to the next city. He wasn't getting paid for like six weeks, it was a promo tour. So I was like, man, I'm sick of doing promo by the second album. And then Joe the Butcher, who owned Rough House, he goes, check it out. The day your record can go door to door and knock on the door and sell itself, then you ain't got to do work no more. But Yo. until that day, go do the promo tour. Now, was he in but, but also, man, you put all this fucking time and effort to make some music, right? You're fucking sitting in there for six months making an album. You want to present that shit to the people, right? If you ain't coming with importance and a hell of a rollout, why should they take your shit? If you're gonna half-ass it, you gotta yeah, make it. Sure gotta be like, you gotta make it look grand, and like it's the second yeah. coming of motherfucking Jesus. Then people's gonna see, oh, that must be some shit. Yeah. And you know the way shit works is like, I think they say 30 impressions. It just makes you like think of something. So you know, an impression you might see a billboard, you might hear somebody talk about it, you might hear it on the radio. Then after you might be like, after 30 times, it's psychological. You go, I gotta check this out. So your job is to make sure. You, you people are constantly yeah, hearing and seeing you shit all the time before they what's this shit I gotta check it out yeah facts That's it's easy way. your fans are gonna come check you out right what you want to do is get motherfuckers that don't even know who you are don't know you. That's, that, that's what you're trying to do now get new fans your fans could, your fans are there no matter what yeah, <clears> so you want to constantly keep stretching and keep now, stretching now the dude from Rough Rack is he was independent Rough House technically is a, Rough House is independent like Rick, Chris Schwartz over there started as a manager for Schooly D when he had PSK then he was doing street team shit. So he, he, he had a magazine. I remember when I was out there in 88, he was working on Easy es first single. So he had a street team. So he was in touch with the streets. 
you gotta have a street team. You gotta get yeah. out there and work your shit, put the posters up and bring the records, you know what I mean? Show up and hand the record to all the right DJs and make sure it got played. So everything was hand to hand back then. The reason yeah. why shout I asked out, that. Shout out Schoolie D because I never heard of him. I guess he worked with my mother. Her. I found out I was <laughs> rapping. My mother came back one day and was like, this guy, Schoolie D, he said he was one of the first rappers or whatever type of. I was like, yeah, I never heard of him. Like, whatever. I was like, what's up? One of the first gangster records, PSK, Parkside Killers. Yeah, that, so I was like, whatever. And now I hear his name all the time. So, right. Schooly D, shout out to you. Because that Kate hold, hold on, hold on. You know your mom's? Yeah, facts. All right, we got to check in on the Schooly D. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, don't have a disrespect. Well, that <laughs> Kate, <laughs> hey, facts. That, that cadence he used in PSK was six, IST Cop used it for six in the morning, and then Easy E used it for um, Boys in the Hood. Same uh, exact crazy. cadence. Mm. That's fire. The reason oh, why so I Big, asked, Biggie used it for one more chance, the beat. You know the beat? The reason mm. why I asked if, if they were independent is because oh. you guys were touring globally. Well, at first, we, you know, the first year we was just doing everything we could get on, man. And then once that second album came out, and like, you know, I think th that's when Soundscan first started. I think our record Soundscan, like 285,000 the first week. Which is Soundscan fucking came. amazing. And then uh, we was out. We were playing with fucking Fuji's one night and Metallica the next night. Damn. Wow. But we Crazy. had that energy, you know what I mean? To go head to head with rock groups, man. Cause you know. Rock group was a different vibe though. Back then it was a different vibe. It was big shit. You just playing in front of 150,000 motherfuckers. Damn. Yeah, incredible. but y'all also had a resurgence. Cause you had Insane in the Brain. That was what, the third album? Second album. The second album. And then on what, like the fifth, sixth album was the rock superstar. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a that shit just double fucking resurgence. Absolutely. Because Insane in the Brain was, I mean, Killer Man was yeah, took y'all off the That was a single though, right? Killer Man? Yeah. It was a B side. No, and then B -side. Really? Killer Man was the B side, yeah. See, like we was, were, the, was the A side. Song. Funky Feel one. But that was the label. We wanted to hand on the pump and Killer Man. And the label was like, nah, nah, we want to do um, we want to do Funky Feel one. That's crazy. We didn't know shit. You know, we yeah, just yeah, trying yeah, to facts. get in here. But then you know how back then it was the B side. Everybody yeah, flipped yeah, the record. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. flipped it. And out Killer here was, man was it, Stretch though. and Bobito and Flex, everybody everybody flipped the record and then that shit took off out here. How did it get on juice? Um, um, Hank Shockley and Keith Shockley put the movie together. Plus it was the hottest record yeah, yeah, in New yeah. York. So we was on tour, we came back and did the video, and then it was fucking Ed Love and Dr. Dre had MTV raps and they was playing that shit three times a week. Dr. Dre. Shout out three times a week, you know what I mean? And then then the box came out. Yeah, the box. Yo, were you guys in Who's the Man? Yeah. Yo, that time in hip hop is probably that's like the golden era to me. Yeah, it was still a raw underground culture, but it was starting to and all the hit songs at that time was underground raw shit. You know what I mean? There was no you didn't have to have R and B. They was playing fucking Method Man and Protect Your Neck as singles on the radio. How I could kill a man. How I could just kill a man. As a single on the radio, they wouldn't do shit like that no more. Hell no, no. no. That, that, that's I mean, like, I don't know. They be playing all like nah. the, the girls. Now they just got girls eating ass like, like groceries and shit like that. Brown. Yeah, yeah, in fact. It was like that five years, 91 to like 95 <laughs> right there. That shit on the radio. Those, those are the formative years nah, of me. Right then there. it started, everybody started yeah. doing like Ron G type shit. Like, let's flip it shit with the hip hop beat and do the R&B and put the rap on it. Are you tired of rappers with bullshit merchandise? Over here in Coney Island. We got the right shit for you, Bob. Fuck your life. We got the highest quality to the highest standard. Made right here in Coney Island by children and drug addicts. And get the savings. We got 50% off for nothing. Buy one, get nothing free. Buy two, get nothing free. Buy three, get nothing free. Where else can you get that? Oh my God. Don't fucking spend your money. Don't save none for your kids. Fuck them little bastards. Everything I rock got the G on it with the will ahead. Hat, hoodie. Jack pants, socks, chain, ring, <laughs> G on it, gorilla head. Come over to FYL, we're kicking the competition's ass. Woo! I'm gonna punch that dog right there. <laughs> that ass though. Your favorite rapper prints his merch on bullshit like this. We don't do that over here at FYL. FYL store grand opening. If you ain't here, I'm doing this to your little brother. You, you, you really was arranging, from what I saw in the documentary, you arranged everything yeah, for absolutely. Cypress Hill. Absolutely. When did y'all figure out that Sen was more like, I don't want to call him a hype man, but he's like, Be Real was the front man. You know what I'm saying? Because I seen in the documentary that Sen Dog was rapping at first. 
Yeah, Sim was always rapping, but it was it was just the, it was just the chemistry kind of just it developed into what it yeah, was, yeah, you know, yeah, naturally. Yeah, yeah. But you know, if you take Sin out of the equation, man, it's like Facts. having a meal with no spice. Facts. You know what I mean? So 100%. he was always the illest on stage when we was young. You know, B-Roll developed into the performer he is, but at the beginning, Sam was always natural on stage, man. But B-Roll was always a natural writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we was homies, man. We was kicking it every day, so everybody just brought their shit, and we figured it out. We was whack. We made whack demos for about a year. Every song was garbage. I'll play them for you one day. <laughs> and uh, one day we did that, that real That's estate, fire, man. Though. I had a drum machine and a big-ass radio with four speakers, and I plugged the drum machine into the radio, the mic, pushed record on the cassette, and it was one take. When you turned the drum machine on, B-Roll did one take, and that was yeah. the demo for real estate. <clears throat> And we was taking that shit up to college radio off the cassette, just playing that shit and sending that shit out. And that was the first demo. That was the first record we so song we did that was I sound like a record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, this sounds like a record, yo. This shit is fire. <laughs> you taught the world off that. That's fire. Yo, Muzz Muzz like an encyclopedia. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, like, yeah, nah, nah, like, yeah, like yo, when I mean like, like, when I be with Muzz or even like 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 I did the album with L Bill. Like, I, I, me and him really wasn't friends before that. We became friends in making the album. And I would just go to his crib and just talk with him for mad hours. Cause he was, you know, he was signed. He did the, he did a lot of shit in the game that people don't give him credit. Cause yep. he don't have like a hit, hit record that was on the radio. But yo, L Bill. It's a smart motherfucker. Yeah, he, yeah. he was, he would put me on to a lot of shit. Hold up, all them people came out there, but. All right, all right, you got, you got a hat on. There you go, my man. I was about to cook you, but I don't respect that. Y'all don't ever disrespect <laughs> me looking like an Asian, Samoan, Puerto Rican. All, you look like all races in one, bro. Get out of here. Fuck your life. <laughs> Hawaiian <Yeah>. punch. <laughs> you talked about Web3, you talked about building an ecosystem. What was, what's like the biggest gem you would give to like a new artist business-wise? Business-wise, man. To look out for labels, like anything that a new artist should know that you think often, like. Pay your fucking taxes, especially if you think you're using PayPal and you don't think you gotta pay those. Uh, when you're selling vinyls and you don't think you gotta pay taxes, uh, guess who's gonna be knocking on your door in five years? They let you swim around a little fishy. Word, let know? it build up. They let you swim around a little fishy. fishy. Slip. Crush your shit. Word. Hey, nah, you that's shit, real. Always pay especially your shit. artists dealing in cash, like they're not paying attention, but them W9s yeah, that, come. That, that PayPal shit, man, I see none of, I know a gang of motherfuckers that ain't paying taxes. Yeah, Word. facts. That's you real. Know. What's the most dangerous place? And I always say, stay, 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 be a fucking student, man. Always say a student. Don't think you like, act like you know everything, you know what I mean? Word. Once you think you act like, once you think you know everything, keep fucking, find something to keep you uncomfortable. Keep learning, man. Keep learning. Keep fucking with your brain. Who inspires you right now? Most dangerous place? Yeah. One of them probably been um, um, Skateland USA in Compton. You know what I mean? In the 80s. Oh, damn. So, uh, first time I, I walked in. I say another country th th There shit. was like fucking <laughs> thousand motherfuckers in red. Had you seen that? Motherfucking security with Uzis. First damn. time I seen that shit. And a roller like skating? In, eight, in 88, you know. <laughs> yeah, I would have left. Yeah. <laughs> what about yeah. you, Let me get my skates to go. I skated right the fuck up out of here. Because we had um, World on Wheels. We had World I on Wheels, too. That was, more, like that was more Crips. Philippines and some shit. Oh, you mean country? No, nah, nah, I'm, I'm, no, that, that's country, what you, that's country's what been was. cool. There was no countries that, you know, them playing over here. Like, um, um, what was this shit in New York called? Um, well, we had the tunnel. And then you had um, Red, Red Zone. Red Zone was wild back in the days. A little club in Manhattan called Red Zone. <laughs> tunnel was crazy. The tunnel was insane. Yeah, yeah. Fact. that's a fact. What about you, Tia? Uh, I always been welcoming to that shit. You feel me? Everywhere we went touring, like I made sure I tapped in with who was outside, like yeah, yeah, shit, fact. take me where it's scandalous at. <laughs> you feel me? And that's, that's where I built a lot of my relationships. Feel me? Even out here, like, uh, that's how I met one of my boys in fucking Tab Projects. I was with Q, we had Q, uh, we had, we like, we in like a penthouse, and they just sitting in there. I'm like, this is my first time in New York. I'm like, bro, I'm trying to go see this shit. You feel me? And he like, well, he called up with one of his boys. He pull up, he like, where you want to go? Times Square? I'm like, nah. <laughs> I'm trying to see them bricks, man. I'm trying to see them projects. Take me Back. to the jacks. That nigga, yeah, yeah, you feel me? He took me to fucking Spanish Harlem, Town Project, linked up with my boy Uwap. And, uh, well, he, I didn't know him at the time. He took me over there and left me over there. 
and I was I stayed there for the rest of the night. And shit, me and that nigga been cool since then. That's fine. That's but, the same when we go to LA. Like when I be passing off fig, I like looking at the hookers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's, 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 it's 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 little. <laughs> like, right you don't see that over here, man. You go by there, it's not like drug addicts. They like bad bitches. Yeah. <laughs> nah. And nah, yeah, they out there for sure. Hell they yeah. out there. Just on the street, like right like there, they, mermaid, right here. Yeah. Just, and, they, and thongs, and, and like, like, in the, like, like New York in the 80s, bro. And wow. it's not cold over there. Nah. <laughs> so they always, they out 24-7. They chilling, yeah. yeah. Facts. It's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> For the 40. <laughs> but, but yeah, I did, uh, shit, every, yeah. every city we hit, like, I tapped in like that with, with everybody that was whoever it was outside. Take me where it's at. Take yeah, me outside. Yeah. Doing that, yeah. How would you nah, describe nah, the difference sure. between sure. sure. How would you describe the difference between tapping in and checking in? Or is there different? Mugs and Modelo, man. Uh, tapping in and checking in, like tapping in is you know, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like the same thing, but <clears throat> checking in is like you you checking in when you 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 already. Uh, it's not on some scared shit. Nah, the t the tap in. I'm I'm I, whenever I land, wherever I'm at, I'm hitting somebody. Yo, I'm out here. You feel me? Like you know, I need I need somebody to get with me for sure. You feel me? I'm not finna just be running around like. On oh, some tourist shit, you wind up staying in your hotel. Yeah, wind up staying in your Thank hotel you, doing boring shit. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah. we like when I go to L. A. Man, I, I don't want to huh? fucking walk around the Walk of Fame. I don't want to go see the Hollywood sign. You yeah, know what nah, I'm saying? for real. Nah, cause you, 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 can go to, you can go to a city and it's whack. It's the company you're with that's going to make Absolutely. a fly. Yeah, for real. Like you come for to real. LA, man, you're getting, you getting a backstage pass rolling around. You're going to see shit you can never even have. Yeah. A, you could have a billion dollars and I get the tour you're going to get with your all motherfuckers. Shit, right? I've been no, here my whole shit. life. I ain't even know that shit was over Thank there you. with the cars that you took us to yesterday. That <laughs> was dope. Facts. Yeah. And I yeah. just thought that nah, that was dope. Well, Yo, for Soul Assassin's 3, tell the people, what's up with it? Soul Assassin's 3 is out right now, um, shit. Got the homie, some legends on that motherfucker. That CeeLo like joint is fire. CeeLo, Mr. Scarface. The Ice Cube joint with Ice Cube, B-Real and Ren. Dang. NWA meets Cypress Hill on that motherfucker. Then I got some of the, you know, the, 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 the future legends like, you know, Freddie Gibbs and West Side Gun and shit. And then I got, you know, the, the next wave of legends like, you know, TF and shit, like, you know, always spread it out like that and try to, you know. Absolutely. You hey, know. Yo. Hey, yo. yo, you got your ear to the streets. That's, that's, that's one thing that your whole career, the Soul Assassin's tapes is always like, you got your ear to the streets. <laughs> yeah. We still well, a fan of this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm facts. still, I'm still a fan, man. I, lo I love this shit. And it's more about the people, man. It's more about meeting good motherfuckers and keeping them tight, man. Because y'all meet a lot of good motherfuckers out here. But when you do, man, keep them tight. Absolutely. That's how I feel about y'all, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Whenever I'm out there, I fuck with y'all, you know what I'm saying? And me, TF Muggs. Don't that pour that mommy. Okay, gracias. Sounds like shit face, huh? Yo, come on. Get him, turn him around. Yo, 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 yo. Oh, my bad. All right. Good job, kid. <laughs> First day of school. Yo, me, TF, Muggs has got a joint. I don't know when it's coming out, but I'm dissing a rapper on it. You know what I'm saying? You'll see it when it comes out. Oh, it's a banger, too. <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker crazy. Now, one thing, when, I, when we went there, I was like, yo, we need to do some shit where the beat switches up. And that shit switches up like three, four times. Yeah. That shit hard. is fire. You know what I'm saying? Also, yeah. I seen Muggs. He, he posted one day, yo, I found mad old dat tapes from the 90s. I was like, yo, Muggs, send me them shits. Oh, we got some. When we link up, I'm gonna, we're yeah. gonna go through them. We're gonna go through Facts. them motherfuckers. That, that, we got some shit. I can't. That, you know, that's that's like a kid in the can. That's like going to the Willy Wonka fucking the 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 factory. You know what I'm saying? That shit is super legendary. It's like a no, I can't say. Damn, bro. <laughs> you all right? We <laughs> <laughs> chilling. Let's see what happens when he finishes. So, Tia, tell us about. <laughs> tell us about the. We might go the, off the, the rails. New, um, the new deal, man. Uh, yeah, up, man. man. Shout out my boy Bon Ra. Shout out Doe. You know, shout out Equity, Rock Nation, and all that. You know, they tapped in, reached out. You know, I came through, played some shit, and they was like, yeah, we with whatever you want to do. You feel me? So, uh, you know, took about. Clap it up, that's fire. Clap yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 
<laughs> you know, they was they on board with whatever a nigga want to do right now, man. So uh, we definitely uh, shake some shit up. You feel me? So uh, we got a, I got an upcoming album coming out September 29th. What's the name of it? Feeling the power. Feeling the power. Feeling the power. Fire. You feel me? Uh, so yeah, we you know I'm talking about you know my whole shit with sobriety. You know dealing with that shit, coming out of that shit. You know uh, just a whole storyline on on dealing with everything surrounding. You know trying to stay on that same path. You know still dealing with the shit I do. Facts. You feel me? But uh, but yeah. So you know, I got uh some solid features on there. Solid features on that motherfucker. What you got on there? I got uh, I got Ab Soul on there. Yeah, Ab Soul joint is fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We finna drop that uh, in a couple weeks. We finna drop that in a couple weeks. Uh, Ab Soul on there. Is I got the song more. that you just dropped on there. Yup, yup, yup. Uh, for the low. That's out right now. You can go tap that's in on that. Yeah, that shit hard. That's yeah, some that's hard West Coast low. shit. That's a banger. That's sure. a West Coast banger right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fuck with it. Yeah, you keep talking about big money, I might rob you on the low. You keep talking about big money, I might rob you on the low. I've been sliding up in DMs, I've been sliding with the lows. I get mine up off the resis, I get mine up out the hoe. Yeah, but everything's scandalous. You know, I'm going to keep it scandalous, but... uh. Now, what's, every, what's everything scandalous? What everything is that? scandalous, like, that's with shit, life. You feel me? It's, it ain't even about just with what you know what we what we doing and you know how we came up. It's everybody got some kind of shit going on behind the scenes, blue collar, all that shit. You feel me? Like like motherfucker, like we had old boy for a president for a minute. <laughs> That was super scandalous. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah, scandalous. Yeah, so. Top on down. Yeah, so. Yeah, everything's scandalous, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you still got so, it, live action. You still got it. Yeah, facts. You know, it, it just represents, it's like a, uh, <laughs> it's a culture at the same time, like a lifestyle, you know? You feel me? Because you got to, you got to, it's like, like, like you go to him fig and you see, you feel me? You see what that look like? You know, they just surviving. Facts. Or, or some of them getting pressured into it. But regardless, everything's scandalous. That's super scandalous. You feel me? That's like the West Coast fuck your life, you heard? Yeah, yeah. nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Fuck your life, everything's scandalous. So yeah, fucking shout outs to Monster Energy. Yo, shout out to Fat Joe, man. He came to Coney Island. Hell yeah. Dropped off these Terror Squad Air Forces. You know what I'm saying? I don't, they definitely not out yet. They coming out soon, I don't know. Shout out to fucking Cuba. Got a box of Cuban cigars. You said shout, shout out to Cuba? Yeah, bro, Cuban cigars. I don't know you if they legal or not. about Cuba getting junior. <laughs> beep, beep that out. <laughs> They're not legal. <laughs> 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 they just them up. Shout out to Beep. <laughs> beep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shout out to the feds who watch this. Damn, man. Nah. <laughs> Golly. But yeah, that's what we do, man. We outside with Gorilla Nems. Live action in the building. Live action. Come say what's up, Come man. Come say what up, son. Live action. Live action. Yeah. Laffy yeah. Taffy, the Pink Panther. Yeah. Outside, yeah. looking like a tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we about to go to Philly. Go fuck with my boy OT, the real mugs, fucking with Tony Touch. We outside, both coasts. Seem like they don't want no smoke or no beef about this drip here. They don't want nothing about this drip. This drip is mine. So y'all stop believing in these rappers and their little songs and the ad libs and shit that they do. Cause man, it's only one drip called. Oh, this shit drip? That shit won't stop me from busting your shit. I'll tell you, fuck your life. Suck my dick. Pussy. I'm from Coney Island, where my two cousins got hit. Right. So it's forever take over and win. Let's Somebody get into the drip chat. Sponsored by Monster Energy. You heard? Sponsored by Terror Squad. Let's, let's start with this drip. Terror Squad Air Forces. Shout out Joey Crack the Dawn. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Six the Dawn. FYL on the top. Hood by Air. Gray Sweats. Wavy Yeezys. Yo, what's up with Gray Sweats, bro? You trying to let it dingle for the ladies? <laughs> yo, chill, chill, chill. Hey, hey, yo. Yo, hey, yo. Hey, yo. What kind, what kind of sweats? What kind of sweats? I don't even know, man. <laughs> Nah, he's trying to make he, got the the he got the Wakamsies. <laughs> yeah, go. Yo, I got the Peruvians. <laughs> yeah. I got the Ricky Gorilla hat, Puerto Rico. I got the Haram Preston hoodie. Short. Let it do. Let it do. Let, let him do. 
Yo, so good. I got the Hervon Preston socks and some dunks. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, yeah, Hervon Preston. They got, got Yo, Hervon Preston, in. my man. This is the last season he wearing your shit, bro. I know you've seen him wearing your shit. Hervon Preston. Stop shitting on my socks. man. Send him some shit. It ain't good. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Tia. I got the ETS trucker on, everything is scandalous. Where they can get that at? Uh, ETS.official.com. You feel me? Yeah, tap in on that. The ETS trucker available right now, all colors. Uh, I got the Kid Super hoodie sweats on. New Balance Friends and Family Edition. The Fuck Your Life socks. Oh. You feel me? Yeah. Yo, fuck get the fuck life. away from my truck, dickhead. <laughs> you pissing by my shit, we gonna fuck you up. Who's that, that Mexican right there? Yeah. <laughs> Cut that nigga with a monster can. Nah, that's my man, Pop. Yo, get the fuck away from my truck, bro. <laughs> yeah, hey, you. you. <laughs> Yo, he don't speak English. You don't understand English. He understood that. Yeah, yeah. He understood that. So yeah, that's that's everything scandalous right there. You feel me? Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Muggs. Uh, we got that White Sox hat, that born and raised hoodie. Where they? We got these motherfucking fucking rabbits straight from Tokyo pants right here. Woo! It's a new mm. brand, hey. and them and them Stussy Nikes. Ooh. There we go. Hey, Stussy. Yeah. That's how you say it, Stussy? Stussy. We get some of that Stussy. Boom. And we got, as always, the fuck your life on top, the hat. You can get that at the FYL store, 1612 Mermaid Avenue, or FYL.NYC. Then we got Carhartt. Can't go wrong with a Carhartt tee. We got some essential shorts. And we got these Burgundy Air Force, no, Burgundy 5s, Jordan 5s. Shouts to all the right. You know what I'm saying? They looked hotter in the picture, but... We fuck with them. Shouts to all the right. They, they did the right thing. Salute. We outside. Bing bong. De Leon. Don't ever disrespect me. Ever, 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 ever disrespect. Ever, 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 ever disrespect me. Pussy.